I was watching Nick, and because he had so much fun, so much fun taking his motor out of his pickup, getting parts, putting it back in, and then because I have so much fun taking my motor out of my Yukon, I decided to get another one! <laughs> Look at that, I got another one. And my motor is ready, by the way. It is ready. It took a while to get some parts for it. They got it machined. It is ready to go back in the Yukon. I just gotta find time to do it. probably wondering, why did I get another 6.2? Why was I not very smart individual to get a 6.2? Well, here's my logic. I love the interior. I love the way they drive. I love the power. I like the mileage. For pickups, they do pretty well. And after watching Nick's pickup, he's got some miles on it, and it's held up pretty good besides the motor. So I bought this thing. I didn't want to buy one, but in my situation, because my Yukon was down and I didn't have a family vehicle, we decided, me and my wife, decided to upgrade to this 2017, and it had 65,000 miles on it, and it's gorgeous, okay? My plan is after the Yukon's fixed, and I get some time, I am going to pull the cam out of this thing, and I'm going to take the, leaves, or the springs out of this thing, and I've got, I'm going to put different rollers, for not rollers, but bushings for the rocker arms in this. When I do a couple other things, it should be pretty bulletproof. Keyword should be. Now, you're probably wondering, well, why don't I just drive my old pickup all the time? Well, my old pickup's got 190,000 miles on it, and it can, it might not be very reliable. So if we go on road trips and our Yukon breaks down, we don't have another vehicle. So I did it. I did it. I got a 6.2, another one. <sighs> I don't know. It just grew on me. And honestly, I, I'm going to get a lot of slack for this, but I don't care what brand you have. They all have problems. All the new stuff isn't very good. And here's another thing just to let you know. I decided to go with the 2017 and I didn't want to go to a 2019 plus because I've just heard nothing but problems on the 2019 plus. These years here are fairly decent. So, anyways, ta-da! <laughs> it even says leg arms. My wife said, get the license plate that says leg arms. All right, I'll get it. It's just pretty, I love that color. How could you not say no to that color? Don't worry, you're not the one making payments. <laughs> I am. One thing I'm doing right now is uh, this kit, and I've heard you definitely want to do it. This is for my rocker arms. It's got little brass sleeves that replace the needle bearings that are on my rocker arms on my 6.2 Yukon. Okay? And the reason why people say it, and honestly I can see it, and it makes perfect sense, is I'll show you. Here are the rocker arms that go to my 6.2. Inside here are tiny itty bitty little needle bearings. See that little tiny thing right there? Yeah. I don't know if you can see, there's a bunch of them in there. What happens, from my understanding, is the cap that holds them in can wear and break and those needle bearings can pop out and then they fall onto your camshaft and your lifters and then they go down your oil pan and it's a bad day. So, to prevent that, to stop that from happening, I'm pressing them out so I can put the new bushings in. So this has the old one. So I went over to the lathe. I love that lathe. Made myself the right diameter piece out of a, a pipe. Another little collar here. And then I can press them out without damaging them and just slow and steady. Don't go fast, don't do anything crazy. Don't bend these, don't warp these, don't break them. And then I'll put the brass pieces in, and then when I get my 6.2 engine back, I can put those on. And that's one less thing to worry about. Yeah, 
That would be a bad day if it came apart. Let's fix that and make that right. So I went ahead and just put one of them on. And so far the kit's pretty nice. I actually really like this kit. Um, this is what uh, Texas Speed Performance requ uh, requested that I do. Because I asked them what kind of bushing kit did they have and they said, well this one's been pretty good. Uh, we've had good luck with it. And uh, I'd highly recommend going with it. So I said, okay, let's do it. So basically, you have a snap ring on one side with a brass bushing. And what you'll do is you'll put the brass bushing on one side, put the snap ring, then take your lifter, and it does not matter which way you put it in, at least that's what my understanding. And then you take the other brass piece and stick it on here like so, slide that on, and then you get your snap ring, then you set the snap ring on it, like so, and you are done. You gotta make sure though, that that snap ring is in the groove correctly. Because if you put this together and that snap ring comes off, you're gonna have a bad day. So let's not have a bad day. But there you go, put these together. So just curiosity, I was looking through all my needle bearings that uh, came out of those rocker arms. And one of these, this one right here, didn't have a whole lot of needles in it. And what's odd about it is the vast majority of them look good. There's a spot in here, I don't think you can see it on camera, but right here there's a little bit of a wear spot in the sleeve. And guess what I found? <laughs> so this, I don't know if you guys can see it, that's a standard, normal sized one. Look at that thing. It's half the size and it's burnt. Uh, it looks like this one here, if I'm correct, has been dropping needles into my motor. Yeah. That's why I'm changing them. Changing them out from this style to a nice brass piece, but I, I think that's an uh, indication of why I'm doing it. Hmm, isn't that something? Something so tiny, it can cause major problems in your motor if you're not careful. Well, I'm getting a new motor, eventually. Fun, fun deal. It's in the shop, and here's a motor and bunch of pieces. For those that don't know, this motor dropped a valve spring, or dropped, broke a valve spring, dropped a valve into the engine, scored the cylinder wall, and the piston was jacked up, the head was slightly jacked up, and I will show you the, <laughs> here it is. Let me show you the spring. This is what happened about four months ago. Here's part of the spring. Here's the valve. Yeah, it's not supposed to look like that. Because of that problem, and guess what? I happen to have one of the years that the Yukon decides to, well, GM didn't make very good springs, and I got that year. But I've got all sorts of parts here, and I'm gonna go through it quickly so you guys can get an idea. This motor here has new bearings in it. It's got a new cam in it. it gets, the cam that I put in there deletes the DOD, so it doesn't have the fuel management system. That means it can never run on four cylinders, which is what I want, because there's a lot of problems that the GM has with that. I also put new valve springs in it. Um, basically, it's a whole brand new motor. It's bored out 15 thousandths because the cylinder wall got scratched pretty bad from that, um, that valve. And then the other thing I've got going on is these are the rocker arms. Putting those things in. They don't have the needle bearings. They have bushings, which is awesome. And I've got parts all over. New fuel pump, new water pump, new vacuum pump. Injectors have been gone through. Uh, one failed, so I got a new injector. Uh, new bushing, or seals for that. Gaskets. I'm putting a new torque converter in because I've heard 
torque converters can fail in these motor or in this these years and send stuff through the transmission. I'm just gonna do it because I want it to last a little longer. So put that in. So basically the step that I gotta do, put some stuff on here, put that in there, put that in there, and assemble it all, and then hopefully we have our Yukon back because it's been about four months. And it'd be nice to have this thing back. Got it? Okay, let's get busy. So now when I'm putting a torque converter in, I want to make sure that I get it lined up correctly. There's slots, <coughs> not only is there splines that go inside the torque converter to hit those, uh, uh, I guess you could say fan blades, that's a good way to put it, fins. But anyways, there's a couple slots on the uh, torque converter that go to a pump that catch it. So when you're putting it in, you want to make sure it's in all the way because if you don't put it all the way in you put your engine in here and you bolt it up and you could damage it and then you got to get a new transmission yeah so you want to make sure it's in correctly feels good i'm happy Now I went ahead and put some uh, anti-seize on the back of the motor. So when it goes to the transmission, if I have to pull the transmission off again, I don't have to fight it. Because when you have aluminum to aluminum with no gasket or no nothing on there, they get diffused, uh, they get glued together. Let's put it that way. It was fun getting it off. So if I put a little anti-seize around on that, hopefully it'll be nicer to the next person that has to pull the motor or the transmission out. I think I'm ready to put this thing in. Okay, let's do it. Man, that worked out really well, really well. We got it down in there, a little bit of persuasion, and uh, I got it lined up to the back bolts on the transmission, put two of them in. And we're good. I'm gonna let this thing down, take the chain off, pull this out of here. And I think I'm ready to fire it up in five minutes. Be a world record. In my mind, it's world record because I'll fire it up in my mind. Good job, Dad. Good job, Yay. Hand, one hand clap. One hand clap. Yeah, there you go. Now I got all that goodies and stuff to hook up. No, I gotta do the front. Uh, engine mounts and I got to do the rest of the transmission and I got to bolt up the torque converter to the flux plate and yeah there's a lot of stuff to still do 
But the thing is, it's sitting in there. That's what I want. Oh, beautiful. Okay. I think it's about time for us to try to get this thing lined up on the lift. Use the front, or use the lift up, or lift it up so we can uh, take the front tires off. And then I can access inside there and start getting the front motor mounts and all the other stuff in. But that is a good sign. So I got my helper here, Bob the Builder. Uh, what he's doing is he's rotating the motor and then I'll tell him when to stop because I like to be in control and tell him what to do. And then when I tell him to stop, I'm gonna take one of these bolts and I'm gonna put it through the flux plate to give him the torque converter because... Um, oh, wait, 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 uh-huh, what'd you uh, say? You have to say, mother may I, before I'll move. Do it, now? <laughs> All right, okay, go ahead and rotate it. And stop right there. So, right where the starter goes is a great spot where I can put my hand up in there and uh, put a bolt in. Now, I'm not tightening any of them. I wanna get them all in first. Okay, go ahead and rotate it. Keep going, keep going. Looking good, looking sharp, right there. Okay, and then, so the reason why I'm not uh, tightening them up is if you tighten one and it's slightly off, you're gonna fight all the other ones and then you're gonna cross thread. Ain't gonna be good pretty. All right, go ahead. And stop, right there. So we've got the transmission bolted to the engine. We got the engine mounts bolted to the frame. Got the uh, leg bone attached to the knee bone. Hey, did I ask your opinion? I'm just, be, I'm just being a jerk. He's, he's gladly helping me. I'm just being a jerk. Well, I'll jerk this if you want me to. Wait, hang on. Let me put my finger in there real quick before I jerk it. All right. All right, go ahead and rotate it. And stop. That is the last one, and then we got to tighten it up. How many so, is there? Uh, six. Okay. We got six of them. All right. So, got that one, and grab this right here, and I'm gonna flip the camera real quick. Had a pretty good day yesterday. We got the exhaust manifold and the starter and a couple wires hooked on the other side of the motor. The motor was installed, transmissions hooked up, the torque converters hooked up. And uh, now I'm gonna button up this side, put this exhaust manifold on. I'll probably put the valve covers on and then start doing intake and all the front stuff in the front. Yeah. So I, I guess it's time to put the exhaust manifold in. Yay. One thing I'm doing is I'm putting a little bit of copper anti-seize on the exhaust manifold bolts. So that way, you don't want to put too much, uh, just enough to coat it. That way, if we ever have to take it off, we're not fighting it. A lot of times, they get rusty and they break off and uh, it is a pain. I can't find a spot to put my feet. Uh, I'll do that. It's a pain to get off. So, do a little bit of anti-seize. I like the copper. 
I think any anti-seize will probably work. But for me, I, I just kind of like that. Okay, so this, oop, put the wrong one in. That's okay, I'll do another one. They've got slots right here. So if I put two bolts on the manifold to hold it, I can slide this in, put the rest of them in. I would say we are ready to start this thing. I've got oil, I got coolant, what else do you need? So one thing I'm gonna do, somebody told me this, and it's a super smart trick. If you change the oil in these vehicles, do this before you get it to fire. Put your pedal all the way to the floor, crank it. It will not start with the pedal all the way down. Keep doing that until you see oil pressure. And then once you finally see oil pressure, then you can fire it up. And the reason why somebody told me to do this, and it was a mechanic at a shop that knows these motors pretty good. He said, the oil pump on this motor here, if you don't do that procedure, it will rev up to like 1600 RPM and then back itself down while it gets really high pressure if there's air in there and uh, slams that oil against the plates of the pump of some sort. He's trying to describe it to me, I'm trying to figure it out. And basically damages your oil pump. And then 50 to 100 miles later, oil pump's toast. So, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna do what he said. But I think we are ready because I've got that in there. I hook the battery up, put my fuel pump relay back in, and let's see what happens. You ready? Yes, let's, let's see if that overhaul is not overdone. <laughs> you wanna be the cameraman and watch this thing yes. start on fire? All right, here okay. we go. Little disappointed, battery's dead dead. It's funny cause I turned the key on to put it in neutral and came over here and it worked fine and had power inside. Well then when, <laughs> when I just tried to do this, the battery's like dead. So, I'm not gonna start it today. That's for sure. That's okay. I can start it tomorrow. And I might have to get a new battery. So, yeah, those aren't cheap. And basically what's left on this is I gotta put the hood on and then I have to put the wheel well cover inserts that go inside there in but i'm not going to do that until she runs and got one more piece to put on the transmission it's supposed to stop a heating issue potential heating issue um and other than that i think we're doing pretty good in fact we're doing really good in fact and I shouldn't be saying this because it's gonna, I'm gonna have a problem tomorrow when I try to start it, but everything went super smoothly for the most part. And it really didn't take that long to slap that in there. Okay, not only was the battery low, it, it was low, I needed to be charged, but dumb dumb me was not very smart. And apparently the ground from the battery needs to be bolted to the engine to make the starter work. Yeah. Uh, that line was tucked in a spot and I couldn't find it until I traced the battery cable. Should start now though. I think we're good. Okay. Let's crank this thing over. Hey, Kobe, are you gonna help? Huh? You wanna get a charge out of it? Huh? Yeah. Yeah.
No puddles underneath, that's a good sign. All right, a couple things we did wrong. One, well, obviously the ground to the motor and from the battery, that was my bad. Two, I pulled a relay and a fuse out of the fuse box so that when I turn the key on, it doesn't run the pump and won't short something out. Well, I put the relay back in and uh, guess what I forgot to put back in? Forgot to put the fuse back in. So we were cranking it for a while and the fuse wasn't uh, allowing the fuel pump to put fluid to the front. It's running now. <laughs> Bummer. All that. Well, at least the engine was very well oiled. Let's put it that way. Okay, good deal. I am happy for that. That means now we're going to put the hood on and then I've got those to put on and then those round things that move on the ground to put on and we're good to go. Thanks, Dad. Okay, let's put the hood on. You're welcome, wifey. It's back together. Oh, it's a good feeling. Such a good feeling to have this thing back together. Yep, I'm happy. But I gotta break it in, so gotta put some miles on it. <clears throat> About 200 miles, roughly. And then drop the oil, put other oil in it, and uh, hopefully we don't have any more problems in the future but I'm done for today. Just wanted to get that off my mind because I'm the type of person that likes to uh, keep thinking about something and I can't get it off my mind and uh, drives me nuts, crazy, bonkers, la la land. And uh, so the fact that it starts and it drove out of its way by itself means uh, means it's good. All right. Anyways, after I'm shutting the shop down, I'm going to say something. Thank you for watching guys. Appreciate it. And God bless. See you next time.